Good morning. I'm Mike Duran. I am a senior fellow and the director of the Center for Peace and Security in the Middle East at the Hudson Institute. And I'm joined today by Gadi Taub, who is a screenwriter, a professor. You're a professor at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, which yeah. is the Harvard of Israel. You were once Don't a bad mouth uh, you, university. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you were once a columnist at Haaretz, which yeah. is the New York Times of Israel, uh, but uh, but no longer. You are a famous uh, uh, right wing intellectual. You were once a left wing intellectual, um, and um, you're here on a tour of the United States, telling people what to think about what's going on in Israel. So. Someone in Aretz wrote, uh, Gadi Taub was once an intellectual, but now he's on the right. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame. Yeah. It's a shame. Used to be smart. So anyway. And also co-host of the Israel Update podcast. Ah, a co-host of the Israel Update po podcast. Yeah. Who's your, who's your co-host? I can't tell right now. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway, great to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Thank uh, you. Why don't you start uh, by, uh, by giving us your analysis a simple question, easy question. What was the impact of October 7th on Israeli politics, as you understand it? We don't know yet what the... It's too soon to tell. It's, it's, it really is too soon to tell because I think the cultural impact or the psychic impact has, has moved the tectonic plates. And it will take a long time for all the other systems to, to adjust. And I think it went right down, and I heard someone say, not just the the cultural level, but through the biological level and all the way to the geological level mm -hmm. of Jewish existence. Um, and certainly for Zionists, because you know Zionism was never about safety. Israel is not the safest place for Jews. That We knew that before October 7th. Um, it was about, it was about um, self-sufficiency and independence. And and I don't, you know, Zev Sternal was one of my least favorite historians in, in Israel. He hated everything national. But when it came... Zev Sternhall. I, I know the name, but I can't place it. Was he, he, he at Hebrew University? He, he was. He just, he died uh, recently. He was an expert on French fascism and therefore saw French fascism in everything. And especially in everything <laughs> national. I know, I know that kind of academic, yeah. So, so he... He was, uh, I, I saw him as a post-Zionist. He was also a socialist. So his, his, his most important work, and you'll know everything about, you, you need to know about him if you know what that work is. His, his, one of his most important works was a proof that Zionism was never really socialist. Do you know what the proof is? It's nationalist. Yeah. Once you show something is national, then it can't be socialist. And to that, Anita Shapira responded, have you ever seen a non-national form of socialism? Because that's only in books. Yeah. That's only in books. So I disagreed with everything in his politics. But then he did this interview with Ari Shavit in Haaretz, in which he said, I'm not just a Zionist, I'm a super Zionist. And in it, he said, I was a child in the ghetto. And I saw Jews being hunted down in the streets like animals. And I saw bodies of little children falling from treetops where they tried to hide when they were shot down from there. Mm. Uh, and then he said, I came to Israel and I fought in the Israeli army and I saw my comrades die in the Suez War, about which you wrote, and, uh, uh, and in the 67 war. And I said to myself, he said, at least they died like human beings. So that's uh, and, and that's one of the best definitions. It's a little, it's of, a little bleak. But, of, uh, it, but, it, but it goes to the heart of the Zionist sentiment. Mm. You know, the Zionist idea you can explain intellectually, but the sentiment is, it's not we'll be safe. It's that no one will, we will, we will not die on our knees with a bullet in the back of our head. Right. So in that sense, it's an answer to 2,000 years of Jewish trauma, of being defenseless. And this is what it hit. Because we are ready for disasters, but we are not ready to see a woman with two babies trying to protect them with a blanket against mm. terrorists who will, who will burn them. So this, this for, for some people, this was, we said never again, and 
it happened again. And this is why, you know, people are saying that the, 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 the worst slaughter of Jews since the Holocaust, which is, which is numerically true, but it's not something on the scale of the Holocaust, but it's something of the same kind. It's, this, it's that something wasn't which... wasn't supposed to happen in Israel. Yeah, yeah. Th that was the thing we swore never again about. It's a, it's a, it's a threat to Zionism. It's, a, it's at least a, a, a shock that, that, that has not yet been absorbed. Because when you look at the political system, they're still arguing the same argument. And especially, and this I think confuses people abroad, um, they, they, some see it as an opportunity to solve the Israeli-Palestinian problem. <laughs> and so, and so... And Sorry, it, I laughed at that. I, it it I, is I, funny. No, I, 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 laugh, at the, I laugh at the American, I, American assumption that we have lots of problems in America that, yeah. uh, you know, we, you know uh, uh, crime in Chicago. We live with, there are lots of problems we manage, we don't try to solve. But, when yeah. we, but our foreign policy... You try to solve problems. for other people, yeah. But 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 this should have been funny. I mean, Blinken should have been a laughing stock. Yeah. But 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 he isn't. These these people think that they can take. There's there's you know, a whole Palestinian ethos. I'm not talking about the, the Israeli side now. There's a whole Palestinian ethos in which the goal of this national movement is not statehood. It's return. It's the right of its so-called right of return, the destruction of the Jewish state. And they are going to solve this problem with four syllables. Revitalized. Yeah. That was how the, it's revitalized just, Palestinian authority. Yeah. yeah, you, yeah. You, it, it's just it's, it's so ridiculous. Um, but it wasn't. Uh, I'm going to take you away from Israel a little bit. But we'll, we'll come back. But the thing about October 7th is that it, it wasn't simply um, it, it, it wasn't shocking simply because it uh, made Israelis realize that it, it can happen in Israel. But at the same time, there was this wave of, uh, of anti-Semitism that, that swept, that is sweeping yeah. the Western world. And that, I, I, you know, I, I'm very aware of the left-wing anti-Semitism on campuses. I've encountered that when I was a professor. So I'm, I'm not, it, it didn't come to me out of the blue, but I, I'm surprised at the depth of it. Uh, and, and so I think for Jews in general, not just Israelis, suddenly we're, 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 we're sort of in the 1930s again, when, when, yeah. when we thought that period was gone forever. Yeah, yeah anti-Semitism has been re-legitimized, and, and that happened on the left. And I think that all of us... It's on the right too. I hate to say, I I, uh, I I used to say it's only on the left, but I, no, it's I, I exaggerated. Only. It's it exists on the right too. I, 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 all these guys are coming out of the woodwork. I didn't know they were there. Yeah, but, but but in the right, it's still a shame. You don't admit it. While on the left, it's just it's it's the the polite position. It's mm. the civilized polit position to be to be anti-Semitic, and, and then you see these hearings in which a, 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 a president of a university is struggling to, uh, straining not to say that a call for genocide is wrong. And, the, and these people are supposedly, it, they, they go to sensitive, diversity sensitivity treatment, but when they see like wild calls for genocide, that's fine because their map of the world is all by this hierarchy of, of, of victimhood in which the, the people that was most victimized throughout history is labeled the victimizer. And you look at the way the, way, what the, the whole discourse changed uh, <clears throat> against Israel. I mean, you made me aware that first, I think that we were losing the PR war because Palestinian dead babies are, are everywhere. We, we are faced with Hamas, which which actively maximizes civilian deaths among its own people, actively. And, and yet we are getting blamed. And you see this, 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 this skewed, uh, simplistic, even infantile uh, worldview when here are dead babies, the bombs belong to Israel. Oh, simple. Israel is responsible for killing babies. And, and even international law that's on our side doesn't get a hearing because you have President Biden saying that Israel must be more careful 
about civilian deaths. We are the most careful about civilian deaths. And I quote, I, so you know this quote, there's an Israeli comedian who said uh, that the Israeli army is the most moral in the world, but also it's the only one in the competition. Because no, one, no other army is doing its best to be moral. And our generals, apparently, are more concerned with being moral than with winning wars. So in the beginning of the war, there was a, it, took a, it took a few days to adjust and stop doing hakesh bagag, knock on roofs, which is the Israeli procedure where you throw a small bomb on the roof of a building, which is a warning that a big, bigger bomb is coming. And we, we, we kept doing that while, while we should have... We, we, a proper response to a massacre like that must be disproportional. And the fact that, because disproportional mean, this, you create deterrence by being disproportional, not by being proportional. Going into Gaza, suppose we were as wild as they are. You know, I don't agree with you about this, actually. So do explain your misguided position. <laughs> the, uh, no, go ahead and finish your thought, and then I'll tell you why you're I, wrong. I was just saying that, that retaliating by killing 1,200 Palestinians is, is, is not the issue. And, and, and we, first of all, we never aim at civ civilians. To this day, we never aim mm -hmm. at civilians. But, you, but in, order to, in order to create deterrence, you need to do something so extreme that nobody else will dare try it again. I think you just have to be effective. The, uh, I, it, I wouldn't say you have to be extreme. I think that takes you down the wrong... You ha the, the, I think the Israeli security cabinet, with respect to, to Gaza, it, it gave uh, the right orders to the military. Destroy Hamas as a military organization and, a, and, a, and, and, and as, an, as an organization capable of governing Gaza. That's, that's the goal. That's a, military, that's, a, that's, a, that's a clear military goal. You do that, then you, then you have security for, for the South. How would you define doing that? Pretty much as they're doing it. Pretty much as they're doing it. I, I don't think you have to say it needs to be extreme. You also have to show. You have to show Hamas and all of its supporters that that you won't be stopped. That you you won't be stopped by their by by their protests. But the way to do that isn't by being extreme. And I I, I would I would hope also that the Israelis would learn uh, that they need to fight the information war like a war. Yeah. Like, the, n none of this, all of this was easily predictable. Um, uh, that, that they would, this, this strategy of using civilians for cover uh, is, was already well displayed in the second Lebanon war. You go back and you look at the, at, the, at the images that came out of the second Lebanon war, you can't see a single Hezbollah fighter, not a single one. You would think the way the international media reported the war, you would think it was a war between the IDF and Lebanese children. Yeah. And that this is, they have figured out how to do this. So, uh, I, I would have hoped that the IDF would have looked at that no, and, I, then, and come up with techniques for, 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 for countering. I was listening to the BBC this morning. So, so I, I'll tell you where we disagree. I, I but, think... but, may I say one thing? Yeah, just for sure. a caveat? Just to, it's very hard for a military to do this. I know because I worked in the Pentagon on, on issues related to this. And, uh, and the, the U.S. military hasn't learned these lessons. Like, the, those, those same techniques that are used against the Israelis, which American policy is today compounding, are used against the United States. So, yeah. so I, don't, I don't mean to say, oh, the, 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 the Isra Israelis, why don't they get it? They're so stupid. I'm not, I'm not talking like that, because it's very difficult, because militaries are put together to do certain things. Fight information wars is not one of them. But, but, but you don't have the, we're, we're the greatest power on earth. So, we, we do whatever we want and then say it's the norm, right? But, and then we tell others when they do exactly what we do, we tell them, oh, no, that's wrong, right? So, and we can get away with that because we're extremely Because who will, who will be able to yeah, judge it? Yeah, who can judge us? But you're a small power, so you can't do that. 
so here's where we disagree. I think, uh, I, I think the region is so wild that even if Hamas is beaten by points <laughs> instead of knockout, <clears throat> and the damage we cause is just enough to defeat them, this would be considered a victory. Because when, you know, when you, uh, when, 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 a, when a guy uh, uh, my size uh, fights Mike Tyson, um, or uh, is attacked by Mike Tyson, if I just remain standing, that's a victory. And I'm Hamas in this. In this. Yeah. We are the Goliath, and they, in, in terms of military size, and they're David. And if they just, just barely cling on, or or or, or something is that is imp- interpreted as a tie, is a complete defeat for Israel. And so we need also <clears throat> that this would be registered as a defeat in their terms. Now you're dealing with a religiously fanatic movement. We don't pay enough attention to that. We don't pay enough attention to the fact that a, a lot of the atrocities were part of their religious theological conception. Some of the dismemberment of children is supposedly a, a ritual repetition of, of, of I, I know, you, I know you, you keep dismissing this, but I think I, you're wrong. Yeah. I think you're wrong because, because in, in that frame of reference, death is not such a big price. Death, and as a martyr, is actually considered a great thing. So what we need to do is exact a price in land. And, 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 and I think Israel, if it's wise, will finish evacuating the north of Gaza and annex it. And so that you will oh, see at the end different. of the that, war. No, if that's what you mean by extreme, that's something different, G- getting leverage. No, it's not leverage. It's annexation of some. That's that there's a cost to their to. Yeah, yeah. And, and the cost oh, should okay. be very high. It should be very. No, high. that's different. Yeah, I, but I, I thought you were talking about uh, about civilian casualties and, uh. and the civilian. No, no. When you said extreme, no. I heard oh, that, because, the, because that you, you have to convince the people that the people know that they're paying a huge price. There's no. No, but we. But I think that it should, it it should have been the initial wave. Of attacks should have been less, less discriminate. Then nah. we can do other no, things. No, 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 no. I disagree with you there strongly. Because for this two, is, for two this re- is the, this we is, won't we won't go we won't go. But for, for two, but I, but I get to have the last word because I'm I'm the host. The, the, <laughs> Wait no, till we talk no, on my podcast. Yeah, the uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 for two reasons. Um, uh, number one, just pragmatically. You're, Joe Biden just said uh, um, he's the president of the United States. Uh, he said uh, on Friday, was it that uh, I can't remember? I read it last night, so I, I can't remember when he said it. But he he said that uh, that is, Israel's response has been over the top, and he's reported in NBC as being um, at his wit's end with Prime Minister Netanyahu. Now these are uh, uh, these statements can be interpreted a lot of different ways because they're, some of them are for domestic political consumption and so on, but you you have to maintain the the Israelis have to maintain the support of the uh, um, of the United States and this is a concern of the United States. So just from that point yeah. of view, alliance maintenance it's it's uh, it it it's um, uh, uh, it's important. But secondly, the Hamas leadership. The, the, to me, like one of the most amazing facts about, to finish my sentence, Hamas leadership does not care about the suffering of Palestinians at all. Not at all. Doesn't. In the same concept that they, they have, those, the, if, if those civilians are made martyrs, then are, are, are killed, they are martyrs for the cause. And, they, and their, their death serves the larger purpose of, of de- destroying, destroying Israel. Uh, I mean, this is, it is truly a death cult. And they and they want they want people they want their own people to die. Yeah. So uh, they really there, there's no such thing as public opinion putting pressure on them. That's not. That, that's our second point of disagreement. Yeah. Because there is there is a certain limit beyond which you lose legitimacy with your own public and even dictatorial, even totalitarian regimes need a measure of legitimacy. So that when when you fight a war. Um, there, there is a there is a great difference between the end of World War One and the end of World War Two, right? Because at the end of World War One, German Germany wasn't in the eyes of Germans 
smashed. And, and, and the lesson was at the end of World War II that this time they will feel it and know it, that they have been completely crushed. And I think that the fact that Israel did this in Lebanon in 2006 made Hezbollah for a while more careful I, because Hezbollah is also a government. I think, uh, I think uh, uh, the uh, lesson that needs to be absorbed is the lesson of the Syrian civil war. The regime's, the regime's motto during the war, its slogan, was Assad or we'll burn the country down. And they did. They destroyed, Assad destroyed all the major cities in the country, or most of, you know, big chunks of the major cities, with the exception of Damascus, he, because he complete, completely ruled there. Um, Assad, together with the Russians and the Iranians, moved out 10 million people. The Iranians are won that war. They won, they won that war. They, 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 there's, 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 no one, there's no one in Syria that likes the Iranians. They won the war. But Hamas... In, I mean, no one who's not, uh, who's, who's not part but, of the regime structure. But, but don't forget that Hamas is not just a dictatorial uh, ruler and a military power. It's also a spiritual power, and it's also a welfare state. So, so that the, it's not just that Hamas has been voted in. Hamas is a, Hamas is a product of a culture, and that culture with its messages should be, should be uh, traumatized enough to remember Hamas as, 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 as a bad idea. <coughs> well, it, it's not working. The, uh, anyway, it's not working. By the, I was going to say, by the, if you look at the polling on the West Bank, the idea is very, the idea is very popular. I, I think focusing on capabilities is the key thing. But we, we've, we've exhausted this. The difference between us is pretty clear. Yeah, and I'm not uh, an expert on, on their side. So, uh, anyway, back to, back to... So tell us, tell us about Israeli politics. Though. What's happened to Israeli politics because of October 7th? N- not enough. Um, we're fighting the, the old battles. Um, and, and, and what has happened on the left... I think is is very important because it's conf- it's confusing the Americans. Um, the left in Israel has long since given up on democracy. It was the it was the most comical when they were saving democracy in the struggle over reform. That was a a struggle to prevent democratization and to pre- preserve the uh, the Supreme Court as an uber government. So they were fighting for their. Um, extra electoral hold on on power, but they've given up on democracy long ago, and since they're, um, they see the greatest danger to Israel in demography, and so they think that the, the the most urgent thing for us to do is to separate ourselves from the Palestinians by partition of the land into a two-state solution. Now, before October seven, there was no there was no chance to to sell this to the Israeli voters. And so you saw the left basically uh, uh, contracting into two very small parties, one of the, which didn't even make it, it, didn't pass the threshold to, to get into the parliament. This is Meretz. Meretz. And, uh, and so th- their dream for a long time is to create external pressure. This is why they put so much energy aided by foreign money, aided by the New Israel Fund, which is an arm of the, the no longer Zionist they liberal wanna, Jews. They want to beat up the Israeli right with the American bat. Yeah, but they, but they also they use human rights because they create all these NGOs that supposedly deal with human rights. And the idea of human rights is that human rights are universal and that there is no double standard. But these are explicit double standard NGOs which apply these strict moral standards only to Jews. So what they are basically doing is collecting information on violations true and invented by Israel against the Palestinians, and then they go with them all the way to the Security Council. So you had the head of B'Tselem, which is one such organization, go to the Security Council and demand international pressure. But the effective leverage is the American administration. So for a long time, and I know I, was, I come from this left. I speak fluent lefties. <laughs> I know exactly how these do people you still, think. Do you still? I can do it. Yeah, I yeah. can fake it. 
if you want me to give you a, a leftist lecture. No, I, I, and, no, I used to, because I used to be like that too, but I, I can't do it anymore. Like I, it's like a movie I saw a long time ago. Because you started ignoring them. Yeah. And I yeah. keep engaging them. So I know, I know their side of the argument. But I know also what they don't say. And what they, what they don't say outside leftist circle is that they hope that America would bend our hand and force us to do what the left knows that we need but do not want. So in their minds, this war provided like all the stars suddenly aligned. Because first of all, the Netanyahu policy was divide and rule. Hamas here, Palestinian authority there, no chance for a, a, a single Palestinian government to or, 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 or a, a authority with which to do business. So that's going to be solved because Hamas is going to be crushed or weakened enough to bring back the Palestinian Authority. Revitalized. And revitalized. <laughs> and, then, and then also Israel. So if Israel would lose the war, it would be chastened. And here you also have an American administration ready like none before to force us to the two-state solution. And so in their mind, it's like the perfect alignment of all the stars. All the ducks are in a row. This is it. And as we've been saying on the podcast, or I've been saying repeatedly. Israel update. Israel update. We, this is... This is the fastest-growing podcast in America. <laughs> this is ridiculous, a ridiculous idea because Israel has shifted so far to the right. There has never been a, 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 there has never been a time in Israeli history that so many will resist the two-state solution so fiercely. And so Americans are also looking, saying, oh, Netanyahu is going down in the polls, <laughs> right, and right. Benny Gantz is rising. There's a whole Washington this Post article which explained this. Uh, this, is, this is the chance. Yeah, yeah. And they don't know. So, so the, the trains are running opposite each other on the same rail. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a mega crush, because partly the, the Biden administration, with its own internal agenda and everything else, is imagining an Israel that doesn't exist because the same leftists are helping them imagine this. Yeah. And the way it's used most cynically is the way, it's, the, way the Israeli manipulators are trying to do this. Do you want to name by, names on manipulators? I, 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 the, the, the name that comes to mind uh, primarily is Ronen Tzur, but he has avoided saying this explicitly. So I can't... I can't say and with any certainty. Ronan Tsu is an anti-BB, long-time political manipulator, and these people are the, these are the the main corruptors of, of of, a, of democratic politics. They're the Ben Rhodes of the world. They they are spin doctors, and 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 for them, a lie is as good as as truth. And this is, I think, you know, if in, in, on the on the philosophical level. Um, I would say that these are the product of postmodern a postmodern culture that doesn't believe in truth and yet is morally fanatical. Yeah. So when you have a combination of epistemological relativism with moral absolutism, combine the two and you have license to lie. There's no truth, but there is absolute moral right. So you can just invent the, whatever facts you need to support. And these, these people, so in the, in, this is a fancy way to say it. If you want a simpler way to say it, these, their mentality are those of advertising agencies. They, they, they have no respect for any rational discourse. They're trying to influence. Advertising agents, but, but, with, the, but with the spirit of Joseph Stalin. Or, or, of uh, socialist realism and yeah, or uh, I forget the name of it, or or John Edwards, you know, or or fanatical theologians that are oh John, you mean Jonathan Edwards, Jonathan from Edwards, from, uh, yeah. from American history. Uh, I was thinking of John Edwards, the guy yeah, who ran for uh, vice president. Sinners in the hands of an angry God. Uh -huh. So they have this moral conviction along with with ad advertising agency uh, uh, relation to truth. And, then, and, uh, and so you see them, you see what they did in academia and, and then what they do in politics. And so they, destroyed and academia. So they uh, completely. And, and, and this is why we need think tanks, you know? Just, it is. I'm just saying. Think tanks are saying. very important. Yeah. Because, and, and so, because universities are crap. Yeah, because we need some sanctuary where we can actually think. Yeah. In, I, I've been in, a, in, a, in an American university at the very last moment when you could still survive 
with my opinions, which were on the left then. They were on the left, but they were against post-colonial studies. And in one class that I was sitting, I criticized, maybe in an overly Israeli way, um, because I didn't, mean, I didn't ha yet have moderating influences like yourself. Uh, and I said something, I think it, it, might have been, it might have been strongly phrased and against some article, I remember who, by Michal Sobel, she's an ex Israeli. She's a Sobel. great friend of mine. She is, good. Like family to me. So careful what you say I, here. I, careful, I, careful. I, I did not agree with her argument. Okay, thank you. And said so. It was something about, she wrote something about Indians, about Native Americans, sorry. And the professor took his stuff as I was speaking and walked out of class without saying a word. And I was dumbstruck. I, I followed him. I followed him. <laughs> of course, followed of course him. you did. Of course I you followed did. him. Come back here, I'm going to argue with you. No, no, I, no it's not what I said. My, you just know me and you think it was the regular me. I was, I was, out, I was not in a polemic mood. Oh. I was, because I'm a foreign student in a foreign country and you've just labeled me. A, oh, you were hurt. You were hurt. Or I you was were, not or just you were, hurt. I uh, was outraged because you just labeled me illegitimate in the eyes of students. Uh -huh. and, and, and in the end, in the end, the department took my side because you do not, you know, I'm a teacher now. Yeah. I've heard stupid and extreme things from students. Can, you were a teacher in academia once. The, is the idea that you can just walk out of class without answering a student, that's the last thing a teacher should do. But, so, but after that, look, I, we, I sat in a class, we did, I'm, I'm, I'm a graduate of an American history program. So Rutgers. We, yeah, so, we, so we're studying American history for a PhD. And, and there are only two people in class who are willing to say anything good about America, anything whatever. I'm fairly critical of a lot of things in America, but I think America is a force of good in the world. As my, my father used to tell me, he would look at me over his glasses and said, whenever I said something critical about America, remember that America saved the world from the Germans twice. So, um, so I, 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 I'm generally very fond of America. And the only two students who were willing to say anything good about America in that class were me and a Japanese guy doing the <laughs> diplomatic history. All the others, which was just, there was no, nobody was speaking of transphobic then, and there was no such thing. Uh, but, but everything was, was mis misogynist, colonial, <laughs> imperialist, racist, all, all, the, the, all the other epithets that they have for, for, the, 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 for evil. Um, and so this is, this is why we need think tanks. Um, but, but we were talking about Ronen Tzu. And, and, and what this manipulation was supposed to be, as I understood it, and people got it the first day because he organized the committee of the families of the hostages on day one. Yeah. On day one, no one understood what was happening. This guy was already figuring it out. And there's and, that, there's that and, do we, you need to unpack for everybody what that's all, because there was that, there was that video that went around of Ehud Barak uh, in the 555 video explaining how the, how the hostages, that was the key issue to grab hold of. In order to topple it, Bibi. To topple Netanyahu. So, but you got to explain it to everybody. But, so I'm not sure, I, so I can't pin it down on Ronen Tzu because he, he but this is But he's in that milieu but what, anyway. But what these people are trying to do now is they are trying to use the hostage issue in order to prevent Israeli victory in the war. They are pushing for a deal in which a 45-day ceasefire, which will probably be a it'll end permanent up hundred, No, it'll be 135 days. Uh, for, by, for one for every hostage, it's 136. The, the, no, the, they, they'll, they'll, they'll extend it. The dream is, the dream is to extend the, it. They'll extend it. So, That'll take us well over halfway to the, think, new, to the but election. Think, but think of the sophisticated play. They adopted, they immediately grabbed on the hostage issue because if their dream is that American pressure would force Israelis to do what they don't want to do and partition the land for their own goods, then the issue that you can, you can somehow plausibly or appear less cynical and, and, and not declare that you want to stop the war is to say, I want to save the victims at all, the but hostages we, at all costs. Let me, yeah, let me just quickly unpack it to make sure everybody's with us because the, the, the play is 
we say that we, the people behind this move, say that, uh, that freeing the hostages is the urgent priority over everything else. Yeah. And so we need a deal to free the hostages. And what they expect is that deal will lead to a prolonged ceasefire, which will, which will uh, during which time they will be able to uh, demand uh, 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 elections, or they will be able to leverage American policy. Uh, American policy right now, that same article that said that Biden was frustrated with Netanyahu also said Biden was strongly urging Netanyahu to cut a deal with, with, with Hamas and to go to Cairo to go to the negotiations. Send somebody to Cairo to the negotiations. Which will topple so, Netanyahu. Which, yeah, and then, uh, so either with American policy or just because there's a prolonged pause, then, then, the, then the claim will be, okay, the, war, the immediate urgency in the war is over now, so you can step aside. And so they, 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 have, a, they have a sequence in mind. But it starts with the hostages. It's, it starts with the and hostages. The hostages and, a lot and, of the people, and a lot of Israelis, some significant segment of Israelis buy the argument, not necessarily for, for, because they see the, politi the politics behind it, but they feel bad about the hostages, and they do think that that's yep. the priority. But, but, but in my opinion, the people who are willing to stop the war in order to return the hostages are a tiny minority. Israel, in Israel, unlike America, there is a very immediate reality test to your conceptions because mm -hmm. dangers are, are, are very, very uh, present and, and vivid in the minds of, of, of the public. And so... The, in, in my mind, and, and you can you know, write this down and, because I'm making a prediction, and, 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 and if I'm wrong, it will be very clear. <clears throat> this, this whole idea is going to crush, crash against the reservists coming back from the war, the general Israeli public, which understands what the meaning of losing the war is, and the, all, about 200,000 evacuees who are unable to return home. And I, and, and I wrote in one tablet piece that, that there, was, there was already friction. Because one march for free the hostages now got into a fight when they passed near a hotel where evacuees were still housed. And these, this woman from the north went out, and there's a video of her on Twitter. Just because, because the, the, of the attacks by, by Hezbollah across the border, Everyone who lives in, uh, along the border in the north of Israel has been evacuated. Yeah, so and, this and, is a, and a, a, it's not just the attacks; it's also the fear of a coming, com, uh, coming full-out war. A, 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 yeah, a fear of the, an, an October seventh-like event. And, and this is exactly what the woman said. And 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 to my surprise, she was she she was, you know, because everybody is polite to the families of the hostages. Mm. It's you understand what yeah, the yeah, pain yeah. is yeah. and what torture it is. But it got into, so I don't know if it was a family or just a supporter, but sh this woman came shouting that one of the evacuees said, what exactly are you demanding? You're demanding that we lose this war? Am I, am I, you want me to be burned alive by Hezbollah in the north? What are you talking about? And she was, she, she was using stronger words. And so I think that this, this idea that Israelis understand what it means to lose this war, the left only see, sees the prize I mean, the, the, the fanatical, the ideological left, only see the prize, which is a two-state solution, which they have spent a lifetime and toppling for. Netanyahu. And, but they, this is, that defined their identity, and they're unable to see. And so you see, you, see, you pointed me to the argument by Alouf Ben, uh, the, the, editor, the editor of Aretz, and, 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 and you can see the An article, The article in Foreign Affairs, which is remarkable because it states... That no, he states clearly and openly that nobody in Israel, not Lapid, not Gantz, not Netanyahu, nobody who's possibly going to be in a leadership position supports a two-state solution. But he says this is the only thing, this is, this, this is the only answer, and it's in Foreign Affairs, the most prestigious U.S. journal. And also and, he, and he's, so, he pins his hope on, on the United States. Hope, no, it's so, it's so clear. He's saying, please, America, save Save, save us, us from ourselves. Save us from ourselves by my plan, which nobody in this country agrees with. So, so you know, when I said that the, so, these people but want it us... It should never be published in foreign affairs. It's a joke. The, 
it, it's it's I, I agree. It's, it's, it's by its own terms. By its own terms. I mean, the way. It, it it undermines mm -hmm. itself. But the, but this is the, this is their their frame of mind, and it's and to go back to your original question, the, imagine how divorced it is from the tectonic shift in the plates. They 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 are they are. But they have they're a, on a crash course with reality. But they have just, they they have um, they have uh, a number of things going for them. One is the policy of the United States, which is seems dead set now on recognizing a Palestinian state. Uh, I'll be very surprised if there isn't a Pal a rec American recognition of a Palestinian state by summer. Uh, I think that's Biden sees that as his uh, uh, foreign policy achievement for his uh, for his presidential campaign, and um, and they have a incredible purchase over the mainstream media in Israel. The biggest columnists all support this. Yes. But Some of the biggest columnists. Yes, but all this With the, is a small strata that the, the uh, Israel's, I call them the October 6 elites, and that have not yet changed, and, and, and they're sitting on a volcano because people are willing to go to great lengths. I interviewed... Um, I, I'll tell you something about what's going on in Aretz in a minute, but uh, and how they they imagine it. Um, but 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 first, I interviewed this reservist who is also from the Gaza envelope area, so his family was evacuated, and he went to reserve. He's a combat soldier, uh, <coughs> kippah wearing, relig national religious, and and he said to me, he said, I was I was discharged from reserve service. And my children greeted me at home, and they said, Dad, not at home, at where they are lodged now. I said, Dad, why did you <coughs> return from the army if we can't go home yet? We're not home yet, so you yes, should you, still you be. Did, you didn't finish the job. Yeah. So, so, and then he said, call me for two years reserve service, and I'll go. Because people, look, if you think that this is an existential threat to the existence of Israel, as I think it is. Because if we lose the war here, then all the other sharks will smell our blood in the water, or, I'll, or uh, all our potential allies will turn their backs to us. <clears throat> I don't need to tell you that the pipe dream of a Saudi normalization is completely out the window. We will now be the, the, we, the small dog that was just beaten in, the, uh, in a neighborhood that, that, that's all against it. And therefore, as I said in the beginning, we should, and, 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 and what was our disagreement about the first initial bombing, which I, I said should have been less careful? They know that moral constraints are part of our we, code. Yeah. And so they know how to, um, how to restrain us. And we should have at least sent the message that we are willing to be immoral. I don't think we should have been, but we should. And, and you know, I, I took this from a, a president that's no longer <coughs> popular in America, but was, was, was one of the best presidents in terms of foreign relations, Richard Nixon. And he, had, he called it the mad president theory. He said, these, these Soviets should think that I'm capable of anything. And so, and we don't have anyone who is acting like this, and certainly not our generals. They're all, they're all, uh, they, they, they they're all Harvard educated. Eisenhower also said, uh, from whom Nixon learned everything, uh, it, it said that you, uh, you should never, as commander in chief, you should never telegraph what you're going to do ahead of time, and you should ever, never say what you won't do. Yeah. So. And Israel, that, that Israel is, is, of course, doing both right now. The current but under pressure from the United States. The current American administration is not following that advice. No, no, it's not. Did you? No. A, a common friend of ours sent me this uh, this fake meme with Joe Biden with a helmet of uh, Sun Tzu, uh, mm -hmm. and there was a quote from John Joe Tzu, and it said. <laughs> When attacking your enemy, always give them a weak advance warning. <laughs> oh, yeah, about the Houthis in there. Um, we're gonna we'll open up. We have time for a couple of questions, but just before we go to questions, you're you're here in America. You're going around. You're talking mainly to Jewish communities. Mm, yeah, not only, but so tell tell us tell us uh, what's your as a uh, mm -hmm. you've been out there about in the land. 
What 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 have you learned about relations between? Let's uh, put it on the but, table. I was in Texas. What what, do you, what have you learned about relations between Israel and the diaspora? Um, I think there is an opportunity now. Um, I think it it enables us to draw clearer lines. It's very hard to say in Israel that some of these some of the Jewish communities, the the liberals, the the ones who are. Um, supporting the new Israel fund are adversaries of Zionism and we should treat them like this. I don't want to say enemies, I don't want to have no ambition causing them any harm, but we should fight against their politics much more directly. I've been what, engaged. What, what, what is their politics? The, in J Street, Peace uh, Now, um, the, these, these people who are su still supporting uh, partition, and also the more radical wing, which, is, uh, which, I, w which belong to what, what John Fonte, who's sitting in the audience, described as transnational progressivism. We have our own arm of that, small in Israel, but these new Israeli fund Jews are exactly that. And this is, if you think uh, uh, that not just uh, as John did, horizontally on, on a global scale, but also in terms of particular Jewish history, our fragment in this big picture, then you see that in, in Judaism there has always been a yearning to solve the, problem, the Jewish problem by universalizing uh, politics. And so you had, the, 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 in the days of the Maccabim, you had the Hellenistic Jews who thought, let's just, let's just assimilate into the Hellenistic world and then into the Roman Empire uh, structure. And, and Tony wrote about the Herodians mm -hmm. not, not long ago, Tony, Tony Badran. Uh, and, 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 then, and then you had the Bolsheviks. If you look at the, the early Bolshevism, there was like an unbelievable percentage of, of, of Jews among them who will finally solve the paradigmatic problem of minorities by doing away with identities. And now you have the globalists. And it's, and, it, and it's a new version of the same thing. So the New Israel Fund is actually, these people are not just two statists. They are anti-national in a, in, a, in a very poignant way. And they want Israel to become something else, a state of all its citizens. And I had, I had a, a fight with, with uh, Jonathan Myers, who is the president of the New Israel, a historian, and the president of the New Israel Fund. And, and these people always represented themselves as tough lovers. They're going to help Israel be cured for fanaticism. Yeah. And so they, they use all these slippery phrases. Like they say, oh, I am, I'm, I'm all for self-determination for all the people in Israel. Yeah. So yeah. you notice this is not like saying I'm for this is the bro, Jewish this is right bro, to self-determination. It's, like I, it's like saying, it's like pretending to be a Zionist but saying, oh, I'm for universal suffrage. This is uh, Barack Obama when he was asked about American exceptionalism. And he said he, he, he's for American exceptionalism the way a Greek is for Greek exceptionalism. Yeah, exactly. In the world. Exactly. So, so that part, I think there's no, that part would just support the, the imposition on Israel. But, not, but then there are, there are many who are liberal in American politics, but then strongly Zionist. And, when, and, and so I for, found there was an actual opportunity to to tell them something about where they are going the wrong way. Now, it's very hard to convince people that they are wrong, but now you have a, a small leverage in which you can show them that it is very dangerous for Israel to, 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 to surrender to Joe Biden's wishes. And so suddenly, you can't move them. To th like, like the minute you mention the Republicans, then you get a lecture on how the danger of Nazism is imminent, and if Trump is elected, democracy will end, and all that. But they begin to understand how dangerous, how dangerous this administration is to Israel, and also they are more receptive to what I can I, I can say here is your interpretation of things that they suddenly see the appeasement of Iran, and they suddenly see it for the mistake that it is, and you can convince them in that. And and I ventured into the synagogue this last Kabbalat Shabbat on Friday, and I was bracing myself for a few angry liberals to, to tell me that I'm a Nazi in, in, in disguise, and almost nothing happened. So mm. people were receptive. 
the, the, if, if I may, just one more comment. There was one acrimonious meeting where, um, where parents and young bar mitzvah kids, the seventh graders, came to ask me on something I'm not an expert in. I don't, I don't know. I, I, well, my answer was, go study karate and jiu-jitsu. And because they said, what do our children do if Muslim kids come to them and say, you are a genocide, gen, you are supporters of genocide? What, what do the kids do? And I said, you know, I can't give k kids advice. Arm them with the right arguments um, and teach them self-defense, but, but tell them to just just walk out, just avoid this. If there's like a whole class believing in that, then take them to another school. Hard to know what to say. And, and, and there was w one particular person who very angrily, and you, you know the type, it's this, this idealistic liberals with very, very strong opinions who said, no, you must engage the Muslim students and you must tell them, I listen to your perspective and I see where you're coming from and here's my perspective. And this is, this is a mistake that, that liberals keep doing, they keep doing it in Israel when the leftists want to say, let's just accept the Nakba narrative. And there's two narratives. There's the Zionist narrative and their narrative. But, you, the, but their narrative is kill you. And you can't, there's, the, the, you know, and, and especially in America when, where people think that there's a middle between every two points. Yeah. There isn't a middle between people who want to kill you and you're wanting to live. There's no half killing you in the middle. There's not, no such thing. The other thing is it's, it, 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 isn't, uh, it isn't so much an ethnic thing as a progressivism. And Israel is a symbol for progressivism. <clears throat> so you could, you could refute every argument. Let's see, there, was a, there, was a, uh, there was a clip on television, I can't, on, the, on the social media. I can't remember where it was. But some guy was chanting, uh, you know, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. And uh, somebody walked up and said, which river, which sea? And they and, they didn't and he know. couldn't answer. Yeah, yeah, he couldn't. He doesn't know. They're, it's not. It's got. The, if you think you can have a that rational discussion is going to. Yeah, so, someone said uh, all the way from the river to the mountains. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, time. We are. Do we do we still have some time? Couple minutes. Over, but we started late. Yeah. We, I I I'm, I'm going to have five extra minutes here, sir. Um, so I wait, wait. You have to talk into the microphone so that. And the milli please, our millions of viewers out there can and, hear you. And, and tell us who you are. And sure. um, my name is Ethan Gutman. I work in Congress. Uh, this is just a question about deterrence, what you guys were talking about before. So Mike said that deterrence needs to be reestablished, but only by military means. So that means the IDF fighting Hamas. Um, but in terms of a possible Lebanon front, um, isn't it important that maybe not on the civilian life level, but in terms of infrastructure and economics, that People in Beirut, for example, see what's happening in Khan Yunus, and that'll put pressure on Hezbollah and Nasrallah not to open a second front there. Uh, and doesn't that uh, enter uh, the equation? I don't, I don't believe. Uh, I don't believe that th that that is the major factor in Nasrallah's thinking. Um, it may it may be a factor. It, people always say it. I don't know what what's in his mind. But I look at Hamas and I look at Assad right next door. I look at what, what Hezbollah did in, 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 uh, in, in Syria. These, these regimes do not rely on the support of their public. And they are willing, they are willing to, to kill an enormous number of their pub, members of their public. The, this myth that, that Hezbollah is a almost like a democratic party gathering support from the from the Lebanese I think it's been refuted by events many times many times over we were told we were told I've been doing this for a long time we were told that back in 2000 that Hezbollah had become it wasn't it wasn't a light infantry division of Iran it was a Lebanese militia, and it was very responsive to Lebanese opinion. And the whole reason it was attacking Israel was because Israel was occupying Lebanese territory. There was a, there was a UN resolution in 2000, unanimous UN resolution, saying Israel withdrew entirely uh, from Lebanon, and the rockets and missiles still followed the, 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 uh, followed the Israelis. So for me, it's 100% um, a, a, military, a, a, a military proposition. 
And any military man who starts talking about public opinion and delegitimating Hezbollah in, in, in Lebanese public opinion is not doing his job. And any American diplomat like um, whose name rhymes with Bamos Bokstein, who's going to, uh, who's, who's saying, oh, we're going we're gonna to create economic incentives. Because look, look, at, look at the economic trauma in Lebanon. Look, look how they're suffering. Uh, this is an opportunity for, for Hezbollah to, uh, to, uh, to win credit with the larger public because it will, uh, because it will cut a deal that will increase um, uh, foreign direct investment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that, is, that is a person who has not learned any of the lessons of Middle Eastern history of the last 20 years. Just look at, look at, what, look no, but, at, look at how these, these regimes operate. But, but this is a straw man. I, I, and I, and I, uh, I'm not convinced by this argument because these people, when, when they're desperate, Cut they, his can, mic, please. They, can, they can go, <laughs> when they're desperate, they can go full Assad. But mostly, they will still be hesitant if the price for opening a conflict is not just losing their weapons, but also destroying their country. Uh, so, if so, you, if you, if you, but I'm not saying that. If in order you to destroy offer. their weapons, if you destroy their weapons, their weapons are so deeply embedded in civil society, in in in, in uh, civilian areas. If you destroy their weapons, you're going to do an enormous amount of damage, way beyond the, the, it, to, to the military. You don't. You don't, you, have create, to, you don't have to. You don't have to think about that. If just focus. If you focus on the military, the Let's not go again too deeply in this. I'll just say that if you completely destroy the sewer system of Beirut, you're creating pressure. I don't believe it. I think the minute the minute you're a military man talking about, you know, we had uh, General. Uh, uh, no, uh, what? No, I said I, I, I was. Go I, I wanted the last word, and now you're snatching. It we, away had a, we had a we had a in the Iraq war in the Iraq war we had a general who spent all his time in there's Baghdad. No, there's in, no having the last word with Mike. There's no such thing. You know, nobody ever, nobody ever, <laughs> nobody ever had the last accused word. you of being a man of few words, <laughs> William. Hi, uh, uh, thanks for the uh, conversation. What uh, a William great Shoot. voice you have! You should be on radio. Uh, well. Uh, I've been on TV. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, William Chu, uh, Japan Chair Fellow here at uh, Hudson Institute. Uh, I have a question that sort of touches on what Mike was talking about earlier in terms of um, information warfare by the uh, IDF, as well as um, what you mentioned in terms of uh, sort of the moral and the immoral uh, sort of uh, construct. Um, I, I guess my question is really um, to what, uh, so this is really cit uh, citing what Rafi Cohen uh, wrote for RAND. On sort of the nature of the uh, IDF and sort of the, uh, the sort of the, the pressures on the IDF in terms of both economics, um, the way uh, the need to re um, I'm sorry, sorry uh, reaffirm its legitimacy uh, to uh, and just the way that it's uh, you know it's it's recruited and how it's drawing on reservists. Um, how much of that has been communicated to the larger public in terms of uh, international public in terms of how this is dictating how? Um, Israel is conducting the war uh, the way it is. Uh, because that seems to me that, that that's something that hasn't really been communicated. And, and frankly, that would be an effective counter-argument against the people who are trying to um, exert external pressure on um, Israel to sort of shut down the war um, early. Yeah, D difficult question. The, R the, the IDF is terrible at PR. Um, apparently, it's not that good at fighting. Uh, either or in some aspects now it, now it's uh, recuperated and proved its mantle in terms of the bravery of the actual soldiers but the upper echelons of the IDF are just uh, we, this was we, we keep talking about the intelligence failure but and not about the operational failure the operational failure was unbelievable in, we, we couldn't stop a ragtag low-tech band of terrorists for almost two days. This is because we, we had a wrong conception for many years now where the IDF was supposed to be a small, smart technological army. Small but smart. We were overly smart and, 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 and unable to deal with the simple, stupid military things like shooting a lot of bombs and having a lot of guns. 
and and this the 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 order of the force that we have has been reduced for many years now when it comes to the pr the idf is is horrible and you can still see that daniel agari the ivf spokesman goes to photograph himself at the shifa hospital and and this is very good domestic politics he's a star in israel but if you think if you look at a foreign war you want the army pr person in uniform telling you what's happened instead of inviting cnn to shifa no he's in the limelight and then you see and and then it looks like borat it looks like it looks like soviet propaganda from the 50s you know when when you have a general with a helmet standing there and saying we found this and we found this it, it's just terrible and then they don't understand the, the whole tiktok thing but there's one smart guy who's doing the P, the, the pr for for uh, for the prime minister's office. The prime minister's office is not the inner circle. It's the huge governmental agency that's called the prime minister's office. And, and, and he figured some of the things out. So he said, we can't fight it on the TikTok level. We can't find the, Chi the Chinese algorithm. But, but there is a food chain in journalism where there are certain organs are agenda setting. And so what he did, and he's fighting against IDF PR the whole time. He said, we have the exclusive material. There are something on the order of 20, te 20 tera of video footage from the day of October 7th. And then you take sexual crimes and you give an exclusive to the New York Times. They cannot refrain from running it. And then it trickles all the way down. And so all you guys know of the sexual crimes. Why? Because American audiences finally heard it on MSNBC because it was in the New York Times. And, and so what, what, he, what he's, and he also did the same thing with the Be'eri massacre. Be'eri is one of the most, the, the most horrendous scenes. It's a kibbutz. It's one of the scenes of the most horrendous crimes. And he provided, I think, the Times or the Washington Post with a minute by minute October 7 in Be'eri. And, and so that's one wise way to, to fight it. And secondly, you just need an army of bots or, or, or people who are just, because this is what the Iranians are doing. Okay, well, uh, we better stop there. Please join me in uh, thanking uh, Gadi Taub. Gadi, it was a Thank great you. pleasure having you here. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much.